Alright, so today we're going to be recreating a lockpicking mechanic very similar to those seen in Bethesda games such as Fallout and Skyrim and we're going to be recreating this in Unity today. Okay, so over in Unity I've already got some assets set up. I've got a simple gold material with a lockpick and a pick model that I've created in Blender. And then I've also got some sprites. Um, these are from Fallout 4 so unfortunately I won't be able to share them with you but it's just the back of the lock and then the turning part of the lock itself. Um, the first thing we're going to do is create an empty game object, reset its transform, and name it lockpick. This will handle how our lockpick moves. And then under this, we're going to create a new empty game object and call this pick. And that's where we want to put our model. Unpack that and remove the camera and light. Alright, so now you want to position your pin in the scene to make sure it's scaled and rotated correctly in front of the camera. And then what we want to do is create a new empty game object. And this is going to handle our lock. So we want to call it lock. And then underneath that, we just want to put in our two sprites. And make sure that's parented to the lock game object. Alright. On the inner lock, you want to make sure that's obviously on a higher layer than the outer lock. We don't want it to change at any time, so just set that to one higher. And then create an empty object underneath that. And we want to just name that pick follow. And I'll explain this all in a minute when we get into scripting. Alright, so then you just want to scale up and make sure your pin is in the right position. So I'm just going to rotate that 180 degrees and I'm actually going to scale down the lock sprite sizes just so that they fit the scene a bit better. Yep, and move my camera back down to zero, move it forward a bit. And then move my pick up and just out of the lock, just making sure it's not clipping. important thing with the lock is that the lockpick model itself should be set so that the parent of it rotates at the base of the lockpick. I'll show you what I mean by this in just a second. Don't actually need that empty game object. But you want to move up your lockpick so that it's in line with the current transform of the parent. So see how it's a bit off? That's the point that we want to rotate our object around. So just make sure it's in line. So now when we go to rotate it, it rotates around the bottom of the pick. And now we also just want to move it forward a bit so it's not clipping the lock. And there we go, that should do it. And then I'm just going to apply my gold material to my pick. And it all looks good in the scene. I'll change the camera just to a solid so then we can see it a bit better. And now I'm just going to save the project and save the scene. Okay, so the reason we have these two separate objects is that when we rotate it, we want to be able to see the middle lock rotate. And then we also have a follow object, and this is where our pin will lock to. So we're going to move it to the current position of the bottom of the pin, or wherever you want the pin to follow. Like You'll be able to see it a bit later on after we finish the script. So I'm going to set it to the top of lock for the moment. So you see when we rotate the inner lock, the follow position always moves. So this just makes sure that our pin looks like it's inside the lock and moves accordingly. All right, so in our lockpick, we want to add a new component. And we want to name a script, just call it lockpick, and create an add. And then open that up in your text editor of choice. Alright, so in Visual Studio, the first thing we're going to do is, of course, to find some variables. And we're going to start off by declaring a public camera cam, and then a public transform, inner lock, and a public transform pick position. And then we're going to set up a public float max angle. And what this will do, it will manage how far we're able to turn our lock. So I've set it to 90, 
But what this actually means is that I'm able to turn my lock 180 degrees. So it'll be 90 degrees from the middle, left and right, counterclockwise and clockwise. So if you want it to be 90 degrees, you change it to 45 and so on. And then we're going to have a public float lock speed. So this will be how fast our lock turns. And I'm just going to set that to 10. And then we're going to create another public float called lock range. Just capitalize that and set it to 10. And this will be the difficulty of our lock. So of course we want a minimum of one because we can't have a difficulty of zero. And this is going to be the range in degrees that our lock will unlock at. And I'm going to set a range for that as well from one to 25. But you can always change this to a higher value depending on how easy you want to make the lock. Then we're going to create a private float. And it's going to be our Euler angle. And this is just going to keep track of the current angle that it locks at. And then a private float unlock angle, keeping track of where what angle the lock will unlock at. We need a private vector 2, unlock range. And this will incorporate our lock range, obviously. And then a private float key press time, which we're just going to set to 0. and a private bool called move pick so that we can turn on and off allowing the user to move the pick. And the first thing we're going to do is create a new void underneath our update function called new lock. And in this void, we're going to set our unlock angle equal to our random range from our negative max angle plus our lock range to our max angle minus our lock range. So this just ensures that the lock unlocking angle isn't larger than our lock range. And then we want to set our unlock range equal to a new vector 2. And this is going to be our unlock angle minus our lock range. And then our unlock angle plus our lock range. So this gives us a bit of space to actually move the lock around in for it to unlock. And the wider you make the unlock angle, uh, the unlock range, sorry, the easier the lock becomes. And then we're just going to hop back into the start function and call new lock. All right, and then we're going to move down into our update and we're going to set our transform.local position to our pick position dot position. So remember, this is carrying our pin, so it'll always make sure it's in the right position. And then if we're able to move the pick, we want to create a new direction. So create a vector three direction equal to our input dot mouse position minus our camera dot world to screen point sorry world to screen yep and transform dot position so this creates a direction from our mouse to our current position and then we want to set our Euler angle to a vector 3 dot angle in the direction that we've just set and then vector 3 dot up so this is the axis that is going to rotate around and then we're going to have a vector 3 cross and we're going to set that to vector3.cross and it's going to be vector3.up. So it just gives us a cross product of the vectors and to the direction. And then if cross.z, because we're using our vector3.up, if it's less than zero, we want to set our Euler angle to be equal to our negative Euler angle. So then we can get both a negative and a positive range starting at zero as the up direction. And then we also want to clamp our angle just to make sure it doesn't go out of bounds and just set oil angle equal to negative max angle to max angle. And then we're going to create a quaternion, rotate two, and set that to a quaternion dot angle axis, our oil angle to vector three dot forward. So we're rotating it around the x-axis and then set our transform to rotation equal to rotate two. And the quaternions handles our angles a bit better than an Euler angle. All right, and just underneath that, we want to have an if statement, input dot get key down. And this is going to key you want to rotate the lock. So I'm just going to set it to D. And we're going to open that up. We're going to set move pick equal to false. So that when we're trying to move the lock, um, we're unable to move the pick. 
and we're going to set our key press time equal to one. And then again, if input dot get key down, I uh, get key up. Sorry, key code dot d. So the same key that you used before. Set your move pick equal to true, and the key press time back to zero. And then we're going to create a new float, call it percent, and set it to mathf dot round, and then do 100 minus mathf dot absolute value, so abs, and then we're going to open up some brackets, and then in the first one there, we want our Euler angle minus our unlock angle. Outside of that bracket. We want to divide it by 180 and then times it by 100. Then underneath that, we're going to create a new float, call it lock rotation, and set it to percentage divided by 100, then times that by 90, times by our key press time. This is what's going to rotate out our inner lock. And this 90 should be whatever you set your max angle to, so we'll just set that there. And then we're going to create a float max rotation, which is going to be equal to percentage divided by 100, and then times it by your max angle. And then we're going to create a new float lock lerp. This is going to be equal to methf.lerp from our inner lock dot oil angle. dot z from our lock rotation and we're going to do time dot delta time times our lock speed so this will just handle the smoothing out of turning the lock and then we want to set our inner lock dot oil angle equal to a new vector 3 and because we're rotating on the z axis we're going to do 0 0 and then lock lock so now we just have to check to see if the lock is unlocked so the first thing we're going to do is see if our ler, lock ler is greater than or equal to our max rotation minus 1. This is just to give it a small range just so that it's not doesn't have to be exact. We're going to open that up and then we're going to see if our oil angle is less than lock range dot y and our oil angle is greater than unlock range dot x. And if it's in that range, it's unlocked. So I'm just going to call a debug message just to let us know. And you can call whatever function you want from there to maybe open up some kind of UI. Um, then we want to create a new lock. We want to set our move pick equal to true and reset our key press time back to zero. So it'll just allow us to move the pick again after we've unlocked it. But you can call whatever you want from that point on. And if else, we want to have the pick to shake to show that the lock is not opened. So we're going to create a new float. This is going to be called random rotation. And set it to a random dot inside unit circle and dot x. And this is just going to give us a random value inside of a circle. Then we set our transform dot other angle plus equal to a new vector three. And because we're rotating on the z, we do 0, 0, and then random dot range from our negative random rotation to our random rotation. And that's it. So now if we hit back into Unity and we just wait for the script to compile, um, you'll know that we need to assign some references. So first we put on our camera. Then we need the inner lock, and the pick position is going to be our pick follow. All right, and then you can set the max angle to whatever you want, the lock speed and the lock range. So now if we go and hit play, you'll see that it follows the mouse and locks at 180 degrees, since our max angle is set to 90. And then when we press on D, it'll rotate the lock and shake if it's in the incorrect position. And of course, the closer you are to unlocking, the more the lock turns. And that's it. So that's how you create a lockpicking mechanic similar to Bethesda games in Unity.